Hey, America, you know, of all the things we've been freaking out about lately, we haven't really talked about test kits in the last, I don't know, few weeks. It seems that we've settled in and kind of accepted the coronavirus testing situation with contact tracing and law enforcement and government mandates and all that. Can we re-examine this for a second? Because I, I did that recently and I discovered that basically the entire testing situation around coronavirus in the United States right now is a hoax. Let me explain. I know it's a, it's a bold statement, right? You know, we talked about the coronavirus hoax. Well, the virus itself is not a hoax, but when you take what is a, at worst, funky off-season flu with a lower mortality rate than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis or testifying against Hillary Clinton, which reminds me, I have to, sorry, I triggered my legal notice here. I must say now, I, anytime I mention the Clinton name, I am not now, nor have I ever been suicidal. Now, looking at take, taking that and saying this is a public health emergency that requires declaring a state of emergency, that this is a special threat that justifies government spending trillions of dollars or printing money out of thin air uh, or creating it digitally, if you want to be technical about it, and violating your rights repeatedly. That's a hoax. And specifically right now, we are still experiencing the consequences of the test kit hopes. The basic premise of this is that the government even struggling to get test kits out there is part of the bigger hopes. The way that we are doing tests in America today, right now, completely unnecessary. Bear with me. We're going to prove this point. First, we go to the hill.com. Testing delays once again hamper COVID-19 response. We can't respond if we don't. We can't respond if we don't have tests. Like, mm, I, I, it, I, it, it's tough for me to cover the news these days, and actually get through the news without stopping and deconstructing every lie that we're seeing from the mainstream media because they're baked into the headline. Surging COVID nineteen outbreaks in several states are straining testing capacity across the country as people wait several days or even weeks to get their results back, causing another setback to the U.S. response to the months-long pandemic. Now, the response might be, hey, if you're sick, we're going to quarantine you. Like, what would be a, what would be a reasonable response? You don't, you don't quarantine healthy people. That's you know, I got part of the bigger hoax here, right? Just this, this disgusting distortion of science where, where they're taking, you know, correlation studies and, and presenting them as if they're, causation proving studies where they're taking anybody who tested positive for COVID-19 and saying that, that they have, that they, if they die, they must have died from it as opposed to just with it as a you know minor contributing factor. Lengthy turnaround times are undermining the fight against the coronavirus, experts say, making efforts to trace contact of confirmed cases almost pointless. That in turn potentially leads to more infections that threaten to strain testing. Now, part of this is like, oh, we don't have the excuse to lock these particular people up or to, you know, force them uh, to, to stay in house arrest. So let, let's just put everybody under house arrest. Oh, that's not working. Well, let's tell them we need we need more excuses. To, we need more. We need to generate more excuses to implement these draconian policies that are totally unfounded in science that are really just based on the government taking on more power. So uh, what, what's the uh, what, what's the end game, of course? We're going to get to that when we talk about the economics of things later on the show today. You got to keep in mind, why is this happening? Money and power. Is there a singular big conspiracy behind it? Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't matter. We know that government out in the open, we don't need a theory to see that government is the biggest conspiracy to take advantage of the rest of us and rip us off. So back to the story from The Hill complaining about these, these test problems. While public health officials say people should be self-isolating while they wait for their test results, there's little data to indicate how often that's happening. 
Longer turnaround, turnaround times run the risk of making it less likely someone will self-isolate, especially if they're not experiencing any symptoms. It really undermines our infection control, Plessy said. Someone who has COVID but has less typical symptoms or doesn't feel that bad, they may feel like it's probably not COVID and they'll be going out in public. And if it turns out they really do have COVID, they could have infected significant numbers of people. Now, it, just, it really undermines our control. Yes, our infection. Well, we're trying. We're not trying to control people. We're just trying to control the infection. So, what are the excuses? Large outbreaks in Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, and Georgia have overwhelmed private labs like Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp, leading to slow turnaround times. Some states with smaller case number numbers are even seeing delays. Now, this next sentence is is like it. it it's just really disturbing. And if, if you can just, if you, if you really pay attention, I mean, you really have to like, ugh, you really have to read between the lines to know what a bad, it, it's not, it's not in and itself, in itself a lie, right? But there's so many lies behind this, so much fraud. While commercial labs have significantly increased the capacity for testing since the early days of the pandemic, there is still not enough to handle the increased demand. Why? 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 There's not still not enough. Because the FDA is actively denying businesses the appropriate government permissions to get their test kits out there. Why are we even doing it this way? Like you have to ask, like okay, when, why, why are we going and having people wait in line in their cars, get a, an uncomfortable nasal swab? I mean, they say like it felt like it was wiping my brain. Like we've heard these like you know, they stick in a swab like as far back up your nose. Like, I don't know exactly what directions they're giving the people, the nurses administering these tests, but apparently it's not pleasant. But then it's now you have to wait a week and sometimes two weeks like what's the point there's there's literally no we might as well just quarantine and they're telling you you have to quarantine while you're waiting for your test results <laughs> but here's the thing most people don't know there is a more reliable alternative to this entire test concept cj if you would please get the video footage of me Taking a coronaphobia test, excuse me, not a coronaphobia test, a coronavirus and antibody test. This was my Facebook Live, and it's by a little blood prick test. You know, when you go and, and you donate blood, they do a little prick test to make sure you have enough iron in your blood. When you, uh, you know, do, do other, you know, for, for testing blood sugar the way you used to have to do it with a blood prick test, it's very simple. You can see, like, I've got, I got this stuff right, they, they, I got it in the mail. This was a test kit that was illegally imported into the United States. They don't want you to have this. They are literally making it harder for people to get tested because the regulations are saying that this test kit is not FDA approved. We were very excited, actually, a few months ago when we got this going, hey, look how easy it is to get tested. They mail you a little kit. You know, you, what do you have to do? You have to, you have to get um, a, a solution like uh, we sterile saline, so you get it Walgreens, and you go, you prick your finger, and you put your little drop of blood on this little test strip, and you put your your testing agent that that pushes it, you know, across the strip into these actual chemical reaction points, where one line will tell you if you're testing positive for the antibodies or if you're testing positive for the virus, or both. And this, th just that this is not available. Like, why? 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 Because they want it to be this way. Now, wh why, why would they take away your ability to test yourself? Now, this is, uh, let's go. Let's go to the paranoia people at Infowars.com. We've got the documents. But no, this is this is a really important story. This is from Drudge Report, Infowars.com. People who never took 
the test told they're COVID positive. Now, they've got sources cited here. A report out of Florida shows many people who have never been tested for COVID-19 are receiving phone calls claiming they've tested positive. Yeah. ABC7 Sarasota talked with a woman called Mindy Clark, who was in line to be tested for the virus when she noticed a sign saying only those with symptoms should be tested. Despite leaving immediately after seeing the signs and never see, taking, never receiving a test, Clark was contacted by someone telling her she tested positive. When Mindy answered a phone call telling her she tested positive, she asked, positive for what? <laughs> Positive for COVID, the person responded. Clark explained that was impossible because she never took the test and asked for a record to be cleared of the alleged positive result. The individual on the phone told Clark it was up to her to prove she's negative for COVID, which he did two days later. Now, this is a kind of guilty until proven innocent situation where you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to assume you're positive unless you prove you're negative. Now, it's not, not necessarily you're guilty, right? We're not saying that you committed a crime because you have COVID, but we're going to treat you like a criminal anyway. Now, do you think I'm exaggerating? Hold on, we'll get to that, that part. What happens if you're, if you're on the list for a positive COVID-19 test result? What could happen to you? Now, back to the info war story, though. First, let me substantiate this because it's not just one random person saying, hey, I got a phone call. They put me on the wrong list. Like, it, it, would, be, it would be understandable, right? Hey, yeah, of course, there's going to be mistakes. No. This isn't the only example of someone who never got tested receiving a positive result as citizens across the country have made similar complaints. Comments, comments on an ABC7 Sarasota Facebook post on the story show how many users show many users claiming to have experienced the same issue. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis addressed concerns about the potential testing errors on Monday, calling the rumors problematic. Yeah, if they don't play to the government narrative, they're rumors. If they play to the government narrative, they're reports. Just, just to be clear, right? Uh, as he said, quote, for that to come back positive when there was no specimen submitted is problematic. So I've heard enough to be concerned about it. If you're somebody that this has happened to, uh, you're going to come forward and give us the details because I think that needs to be corrected. <laughs> no, 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 no. We care about correcting you, government, not correcting, uh, you know, to, to not having you correct yourselves. That's, <laughs> it's like the police. You know, something bad happens. Well, we investigated ourselves and we cleared ourselves of all wrongdoing and, and the shooting of that innocent child. Yes, of course. Now, let's go back to cron.com because we covered this story. I told you we were going to substantiate this too. Like, what are the cons? Like, we're going to treat you like a, a criminal anyway. Texas County warns COVID 19 positive residents must stay home or face prosecution. Now, it's not enough that they've claimed the ability to give you a false positive on procedural grounds not, and that, that you would have to prove that you didn't, not they have to prove that you had that you actually went and got the test and tested positive. So COVID-19 surge in rural Texas has escalated into a deepening public health crisis for Hidalgo County where officials issued an order Sunday requiring those who test positive for the virus to not leave home for 14 days under threat of criminal prosecution. So this is it, yeah, at Hidalgo County on Twitter, health authority order of you or someone in your house have tested positive. Now, by the way, they're going, they're going like a step further in this. And this is, this is what makes us scary as like, we are in martial law in the United States right now. I think it's fair by any definition of that word to say that we live not just in a, a police state, but we have a situation where the police are able to exercise this authority completely arbitrarily based on their own judgments, their own assessment, whether they're wearing masks or not. They can arrest you for not wearing a mask. They can arrest you for not wearing a mask properly. They can say you're on our list of COVID-19 positive testers and therefore you are subject to this. And it's not, not just you. This or 
this is an order from the county from the county with criminal consequences for not following i mean it's right here in black and white failure to comply may result in criminal prosecution but it's not just you it's you or someone in your house this is getting scary this is this is where we are with the police state they can impose these orders pretty much on anyone now what are they asking you now it's not oh yeah please stay at home except for emergencies in some cases like let's let just referring back to the the story from bjr.com that we brought you a kentucky couple is wearing ankle bracelets right now for not signing the quarantine order remember we brought you the story and it was like well if they're just saying it's a suggestion you know if they're putting out advice and they're just kind of scaring people into compliance okay but that's that's not the case they're actually going to people's homes now that's what happened in this case they are on house arrest not because they didn't want to sell quarantine because they objected to the language in the document that they were being asked to sign that said that they needed state de health department officials permission to leave their home even in an emergency like hey you just i don't i don't know i'm trying to think of something not so gory as like ah oh, you just got your foot cut off in a you know i don't in a lawnmower accident right <laughs> you need to go uh you know you need to go to the emergency room here's hi uh kentucky health department i'm bleeding to death right now out of my ankle where my foot has been severed i just want to call and make sure that i got permission from you to go to the emergency room so that I don't die now because we want to make sure that it's okay that we're not killing grandmas as we come in with our COVID positive test results. I'm like, okay, so back to this this Hidalgo County thing. What are they? It, it's not just please remain at home or else. It's no visitors allowed. How are you supposed to get? You're supposed to like get? How are you supposed to get groceries? No visitors allowed. Monitor yourself for symptoms. If requested, make yourself available. Guess what? Because we said you have a positive test result, your privacy no longer applies here. Make a list of anyone that you may have come in contact with. How long is this going to last? This order will remain in effect until the incubation period is passed and you are no longer suspected of having the above stated communicable disease or you are otherwise notified by the state health services. Holy crap. Now, there's another reason they're sticking with this current testing paradigm. And it's not just because their friends are profiting from this, right? I mean, we know there's a, if you're working with the CDC or working with the FDA right now, you're one of the companies that's been approved. You already have a point of contact there. You already have a lobbyist in place who got you this approval in the first place. You're going to, hey, you know what? We, you, why don't you tell the people that we have the only safe and reliable test? That, you know, we can't, we can't let people prick their fingers at home, especially when we can't have regular access to hospitals because, you know, they might bleed to death from the prick test. And, you know, it's not, you know, we, we, need, we need to make sure that having people you know, poke themselves at home, that's, that's just crazy talk. Oh, no. Let's make sure that, it, well, obviously, there's, there are people who are getting rich off of the quasi monopoly that they have on testing right now so there's that for one reason but there's another reason cj if you would please our next headline here from globalnews.ca yes and let's go to our friends in kanakistan our, our our polite northerly neighbors main coronavirus test produces false negatives at least 20 percent of the time study shows and then you go, oh, oh, that's why they want it. Oh, unless you're going, Adam, but why would they want test kits that give false positives? Do, do I really have to spoon feed you this one? <laughs> like, well, see, false positives means there's more tests, that there's more, there's more cases that they can cite as their excuse to take more power to profit off of this system. But it's not, and it, but it's not just that. There's a lot of false negatives too. And so there's a lot of confusion around this. Let's get into this first one from globalnews.ca. Main coronavirus test proves false negatives. At least 20% of the time, study says healthcare workers 
doing testing at a drive. And this is, yes, what which test is this? The main one, the drive through COVID-19 assessment center at uh, Eto Bicol General Hospital in Toronto. Uh, the primary type of testing for the novel coronavirus around the world, including Canada, produces false negative results at least 20% of the time. Uh, now, that's the false negatives. We're going to get to the false positives. According to a study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in May, the false negative rate of RT-PCR testing used to detect the novel coronavirus changes depending on where a person is in the timeline of the infection cycle. On day one of an infection, the test is completely ineffective at detecting the virus, while on day eight of infection, the test produces false negatives of 20% 20 per, 20 of the time. The rate of false negatives then increases every day afterward. Now, you might think, all right, Adam, you know, false, false negatives, right? Well, then it, it's worse than it ever. Then they're saying, oh, my God, it could, they're missing one in five of people who are testing positive. We have to get more tests. Get them tested three or four times. Oh, my God, we got we really have to these corporations that are making millions off of this scam. We have to give them more business. <laughs> like, no, no. No, no, there's a whole other side of the story that they're hiding from you. And, well, Business Wire's got it. Let's go to yahoo.com finance. Finance, that's where they're hiding, the story.yahoo.com. From Business Wire, the headline is, CDC coronavirus test kits generate 30% false positive and 20% false negative results. Connecticut pathologists. New published findings confirmed. Now, we brought you this story first. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Doing that Karen voice really killed me here. Legalinsurrection.com. And you look at this, you go, oh, we got we to gotta check this news story. Maybe, because now they put in the false positive. Connecticut pathologist study shows CDC coronavirus test kits generate 30% false positive results and go, oh, well, they're doing the false positive. You don't know, is that, that sounds biased. And uh, maybe it is because they're trying to say, hey, they're blowing this whole thing, whole thing up. And it's important to note when they're trying to make things look worse versus when they're just trying to keep people confused. So back to the uh, Business Wire story, the current CDC nucleic acid test kits for SARS-CoV-2 generate a 30% false positive and 20% false negative results in the best state public health laboratory. Dr. Sin Hang Lee reported in a peer-reviewed article published in the International Journal of Geriatrics and Rehabilitation, an online journal based in Japan on July 17, 2020. Now, if you've been paying attention to Adam, if you've been getting your news, from us here at Adam versus the man, you already knew all this. You know, why, why are we covering this story now? Like it's now that now it's irrefutable. Now it's it's just out there in the open that, that, that the test kits that they are forcing people. And, and again, why why not in a, in, a, in a public health crisis just let everybody get test kits out there? And so, you know, even if they're less reliable, you know, we're, we're going to uh, we're going to let the market decide. We're going to let people figure out, you know, what's reliable, what's easy, what's not. And like, and I, I got a little criticism, actually, of this test. And it, it's really, you know, operator error. I screwed up. You can see right there in that video. I'm, I'm fumbling with the little prick thing because it's supposed to be spring loaded and it neatly just, you know, pops your finger. And as I was opening, I, I screwed up and. And I broke the little spring mechanism, and uh, you know, so I had to I had to open it up and and just take the needle out and then and prick myself without the aid of the spring. And, and you know, there's there are way like if we had the market, you know, how, would would you do you, do you want to test it? Like if you could if you could get one in the mail tomorrow, and that we're capable of this. You know, we have we have overnight delivery. We have priority mail two days. If you could get a test kit in the morrow, two days. You really wanted to know how much would you pay for that? What, what does this thing actually cost? You see me fumbling with this right here. 
doing the doing the actual you know finger prick. You know what 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 does this thing actually cost to make? It's a few dollars. They're get they're getting this out already all over the world. This is what other countries are using. You go oh oh this is why why is it that we can't have nice things in America? Because government, because we because we have a lot like. Mm, Oh, so many I told you so's. And this is like the big one from libertarians. Like, hey, I told you not to trust the government with this stuff. Now, this is what you get. So just know that on top of everything else, all of the lies about the numbers, you know, all of the, well, he died in a car accident, but we, you know, we tested him for COVID and it came out positive. So we listed it as a COVID death. It's like, how how many layers of bullshit do we have to deconstruct to get to the truth about what is happening with Corona right now? And that is messed up. That is so, this is so messed up. This is so sad. Why? Why? Because we trusted government. Because we went into this pandemic. And yeah, I, I'm starting to think more and more that there is some kind of, there could be some kind of singular global or your main conspiracy behind it, you know, uh, as, a, as opposed to a bunch of just loosely affiliated conspiracies. That there could have been 20 dudes sitting in a room smoking cigars, the, you know, banker class going, hey, you know, next time, next time we see a funky off-season flu that people uh, start to get excited about, let's blow it out of proportion and we're going to do all these things to take advantage of the American people. We're going to shut down the economy. We're going to reboot it with more power in the hands of the few. The rich are going to get a lot richer and the poor are going to get a lot poorer. And that's why it's important to expose these hoaxes. Even this sub hoax, this is the testing hoax. And, and I hope even just this, even if you just go, oh, hey, if you just look, look, at the, look at the current crisis through the lens of what's going on with test kits. That should be enough to lead you to the conclusion that you are being lied to so that people can take advantage of you and make you want to do something.